Hello YouTube friends and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Deidre from Our Upcycled Life and I do lots of thrifting, upcycling, repurposing, and DIY content. Today's video is jam-packed full of yard sale finds that I want to upcycle. We have lots of work and it's lots of inspiration here. So let's get started. First project, we are going to upcycle these pot lids. If you've been following along for a while, you saw I did a really big yard sale haul and I found a bunch of random pot lids and I had an idea of how I wanted to upcycle them. Today, I'm gonna to show you what I created. I have four pot lids, they're all different sizes and I'm going to incorporate them into this old wooden door. This is an old pine cabinet door and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off all of the hardware and then I'm going to cut it down to size with my skill saw. I'm cutting it down to the size I need it and I'm going to save that other piece for a project at the end of the video so make sure you stick through so you can see what I create with that also. I think this DIY needs a really good chippy paint finish so we're going to create that with some salt. This is a really easy painting technique to create that vintage chippy looking wood. I know it's not for everybody, but I absolutely love it. So I've painted the piece of wood with some white chalk paint and while the paint is still wet, I sprinkled on some pickling salt, put it outside, let it dry in the sun, and now it's completely dry and I'm putting on my next coat of this red latex paint. You can um, switch your paints up and, you, and use any type of paint I'm just using up what I had and I love this red color. The red paint is still wet and I'm sprinkling that pickling salt right into that wet paint. You can use any type of salt. The more coarse, the more chippy, the more fine, you're gonna get not as much of a chippy finish. You have to really make sure that your coats of paint are completely dry before you put on your next coat. I've put on this turquoise on top of that red paint and the salt once it was completely dry. Now we're gonna let that coat dry. Put it out in the sun, let it really dry completely and now I'm just gonna take my scraper and just scrape off all of that salt. And as you do that, wherever there's salt, you're gonna scrape down to that color underneath and it's gonna expose, for this project as you can see, it's gonna expose the white paint, the red paint, even some of the bare wood and it creates a chippy old vintage look. Once I've got it all scraped down, I'm taking my 80 grit sandpaper, really aggressively sanding it, and then we're gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer spray, and this is what I've created. It's gorgeous, I love it, and we're ready to incorporate those pot lids. I want to screw the pot lids right onto that piece of wood, but I don't want the screws to show, so what I'm doing is I'm taking off all of the knobs off the lid, and then I'm gonna screw holes underneath the knob so that we can attach it to the piece of wood and you won't be able to see it. Now the smallest lid already had a hole in it for steam to be released, so that one already has a hole, we're just gonna roll with that one. And the knob was actually riveted right on so I couldn't take it off. Now I had to put on my upcycling thinking cap for this because once I screwed the pot lids onto that piece of wood, I'm not able to put the knob back on. So I thought if I use this Gorilla Glue, I could glue the screw into the pot lid, screw the pot lid on the piece of wood, and then I'm able to screw the knob back onto the pot lid once it's attached to the piece of wood. Kind of confusing. Once you see how I do it, you'll understand. And now we're ready to screw those pot lids onto my gorgeous chippy piece of wood. I'm just using a regular screw and just screwing it right in. And the pot lid that already had the hole, I'm just going right through that. And then we're going to be able to just screw those knobs on because I glued the screws into the back of the lids. So now you can see what I was trying to do. I love the look of these tarnished lids and the old knobs. It just has such a fantastic rustic farmhouse feel. So I've taken this old cabinet door and these pot lids, and this is what I've created. A beautiful place in a farmhouse kitchen to hang some kitchen utensils, tea towels. You can hang it at the front door, hang some coats on it. Love the way that it turned out. Okay, next project. I found this old candlestick holder and this old teapot, everything had been given kind of a rough coat of black spray paint. 
I am going to fix it up and upcycle it into something very beautiful. We're going to paint on a couple coats of my homemade white chalk paint. And once I've let the couple coats of the chalk paint dry completely, I've got a baby wipe. You can use a baby wipe or you can use a wet cloth. And I'm just going to rub away at the paint in just areas where it would have naturally aged and just take away the paint. And it's just going to give it that old vintage look. This is a great technique when you don't want to sand and ruin the surface underneath your project. You can just use a baby wipe or a damp cloth and you can see how it just brings out those colors from underneath and I love the look. Now I want to put this graphic on my teapot. I'm going to be using my Mod Posh reverse graphic transfer method and this graphic's available in my Etsy store if you want to try out this project afterwards. I'm just going to put a light amount of the Mod Posh mat on that graphic, put it on the teapot, and then set it aside and let it dry for 24 hours. This technique works the best on a laser jet printer. Don't forget to reverse your text. Okay, it's the next day. I'm taking a damp rag. We're going to just wet the paper ink until you can just start to see the graphics show through and then rub off the paper. We're gonna be left with a beautiful graphic on our project. I'm now gonna attach the teapot to the candlestick holder using my E6000. It bonds really well. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue. I know some people have said that you shouldn't mix the two. I've never had any problems and it's always bonded really well. Set it aside. We're going to let it dry until the next day. And then we are ready to seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. I love this clear gloss. And I've taken this teapot and candlestick holder. And this is what I've created. I filled it up with some fresh herbs and it's beautiful to set on your patio or out in your garden area or even in your kitchen and you can clip off your herbs as you need them. Remember that piece of wood that I cut off the bottom of that cabinet door? I'm going to upcycle it now. I did a chippy paint technique with some Vaseline to make it look really distressed around the edges and I'm going to add this garage graphic using the same technique as I did on the teapot. Mod Podge matte finish. We're going to put it all over the graphic, set it down, wait for the next day, rub off all the paper. We're left with a fantastic graphic and as you can see I just love this technique. It's so nice and crisp. I'm using my laser jet printer and I'm just using regular computer paper and if you're doing this technique yourself make sure to remember to reverse your text or your letters will be backwards. So I've taken this scrap piece of cutoff from that cabinet door and turned it into a beautiful garage sign. Love the chippy paint on it. Would be a great gift to give to grandpa or dad to put up in their garage. I hope you enjoyed today's upcycles and if you love this kind of content I'd like it for you to like, subscribe and follow along. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. And if you like this video you'll probably like either of these two. Take care.